Well, good morning. Happy Saturday. This is Bill Ragsdale. I'm the founding president of the Fort Interest Group in 1969, but we're not here to talk about old history. We're here to talk about the latest developments in programming and the interaction with artificial intelligence. In thinking of a problem to do today, I'd kind of run dry. So I thought, let's draw on AI, the latest buzz phrase that we run to in technology. So I went to BARD, B-A-R-D, it's BARD.Google.com, which is their entry into the AI contest. And I asked it a question saying, please give me a simple programming problem. BARD came back with one called BuzzFuzz. And in this case, you put out the number starting from one upward and any number divisible by three, put out the word buzz. If it's divisible by five, put out the word buzz. If it's divisible by both, put out buzz, buzz. Otherwise, display the number. Well, that was a little bit uh, on, the, on the simple side, and it did not have a lot of pedantic value. So I asked it a second question, and that is our result or our interest for today. So here at the Silicon Valley Fourth Interest Group for May 27th, 2023, we're going to discuss how AI can lead into innovations in programming. The second question I asked Bart was, give me an example of a programming problem of medium difficulty. And Bart came back with this answer, sure. Here is an example of a programming problem of medium difficulty. Given a list of numbers, find the longest increasing subsequence. An increasing subsequence is a subsequence of numbers where each number is greater than or equal to the previous number. Well, that had potential. I thought that sounds pretty good. Bard went on to expand and said, this problem is more difficult than the fuzz buzz problem because it requires more complex logic. Here is one possible solution in Python. I was amazed by this. I'll come in on it again later. But Bart, in this case, remembered the previous question sequence answer, and it realized it was improving on the previous presentation. Um, that is a astonishing bit of logic that came along where it realized it was doing an improvement. So here's the output from the project as I did it today. We'll come back to this at the very end. The number sequence I put in was 10,000 numbers from the value of zero to 31. And the program I wrote looked for the increasing length substrings. Uh, in the first case, it found a simple one, which is only a sequence of three, then a sequence of four, a sequence of six, and then a sequence of seven. And to my surprise, I needed to go to a very large uh, uh, string or uh, array if I began with only 100 elements, I only got one or two uh, qualifying uh, subarrays. By going to 1,000, I got a few more. And then finally, I had to go to 10,000 to actually only get uh, four that uh, qualified. So let's look at the data. I needed a uh, the sequence of 10,000 integers, 0 to 31, and the word fill in does that. It does a do loop from zero to 10,000. It will uh, give me uh, the 10,000 random numbers. And I create an array by going 32 random, which generates the random number from zero to 31. C comma puts that into, into a byte format and repeats this 10,000 times. So you can imagine a little C comma going along, tip, 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 every time writing a new random byte into memory building my array. The word at the bottom, create data, gives me a named array area in memory, and then fill in adds the 10,000 items. The, it's a characteristic of uh, fourth is that when you write a program, it's very nice to write a diagnostic routine to support it right at the beginning. So from the very start of your program activity, you have a way to display your output. So in this case, the word display does that. We give it the starting address of one of these substrings and it will display it. 
A CR generates a new line on the screen display, and then a begin while repeat loop goes across the substring number by number by number. Begin takes the starting address, say fetches its numeric value, the dupe5.r displays that integer, and then the over one plus c fetch less than does a test to see is this the end of the substring. If it is not the end, it increments the address by one and repeats. So this will step across the addresses of the substring displaying each integer value until it sees a declining value and then it terminates. So we see in this case, we get the uh, longest seven element substring. Now we need a locator. We need to be able to find these uh, in our data array. Locator does that. Give it a starting address and an ending address, and it will scan looking for a qualifying number sequence. The start value increments each time this is called. The end value is the same. This is the very end, the last address in our data array. So the zero dash wrote puts a dummy ending value third on the stack. Do takes our start and end values and sets up the do loop. Drop drops that little dummy value we put on at the beginning, that zero, and in this case, substitutes the starting value of the array. So at this point, we know the starting value of the array and we scan across item by item. I C fetch, I one plus C fetch, greater than, checks for a declining value. If there is a declining value, it leaves the loop. Otherwise, the loop continues stepping across looking for a declining value. Notice that the address we get is the ending value of the qualifying substring. Because we know the starting value already, we need the ending value to give us what its length is. And here is our top level program. This is only a two step uh, project. We find the substrings and we display them. So the driving program starts out by putting one in the length. And we will, we will uh, use that to log each uh, increasing length substring. The data 10,000 over plus swap sets up the do loop limits over the addresses of our data array. And then the uh, do loop scans over those 10,000 elements. The I prime I gives us the starting of the uh, current value of our in our data array. And the I prime is the ending value. That is the last address in our data sequence. Locator makes a scan for a qualifying substring. And then the I minus plus dupe calculates the length of this string. This is the, uh, the length value is fetched and then a greater than comparison is made. If this substring is greater than the previous one, the if clause executes. We then save the new length and then I display shows us that substring. Again, I now is the beginning address of that display. If we have no new longer string, the else just simply drops that uh, that length. This repeats over and over again. Most often, every execution is the drop because we do not find a qualifying substring. In those very few cases, in this time four, uh, the uh, if clause uh, true part executes which displays that new substring. So that's the whole program. The output, as we saw before, gives us only four, four substrings that qualify over this as ascending values uh, with three, four, six, and seven. Let's review the program again. The data was built as an array of 10,000 byte elements. The display portion will take a qualifying substring and display it on the screen for easy either diagnostic or final display. The locator program isolates a substring, gives us the ending address of a qualifying substring. And finally, the driver pulls it all together. It get, takes the uh, starting area of the uh, data array, scans across it 10,000 times, finding qualifying substrings and displays. Win32 fourth was the program I used. And even though it's processing 10,000 elements, the processing display to the user appears to be instantaneous.
The final output, as I saw, as we saw before, are just these uh, four substrings and are my conclusions. The first is, in my conversation with Bard, I got just what I requested. I didn't have to clarify. I didn't have to simplify. I asked at the start for a simple problem, and I got it. I asked a second time for a somewhat more complex problem, and I got it. To my amazement, Bard's second answer referred to and improved on my first request. There was a degree of memory and logic here that the program uh, somehow uh, was able to put a uh, second answer in and relate it to the first answer. If I had come back now for the whole new session, uh, it does not remember you session to session, but within a single session, it, one reply can build on another. Uh, the second surprise was that the uh, the Python example came back with a reference to GitHub. So if I wanted to check the logic or I needed more information on that, I would able to go to GitHub to find it. And finally, we see a strong benefit in the use of AI in, a, in one particular area. And of course, there are many, many. But imagine that you're trying to put together a, a question series of 10 questions on, on South American geography. And in your mind, you may know a little bit about South American geography, but not a lot. So you go to one of these AI engines and it will come back with 10 possibilities that items that you would never possibly, would have never possibly thought about before. Then on your own, you can research the 10 items to see their validity, uh, how you would use them. And um, so it gives you a tremendous start if you're if you're uh, embarking on a fairly new project. And in my case, it overcame what I'm calling programmer's block. I was trying to think of a, of a new problem to use and the BART came back with exactly what I needed. So this is a, a, an interesting look at an interesting situation and um, it's got to open up new possibilities in our programming endeavors. So I'll return now back to our fearless leader and our uh, program. Thank you much for your kind attention. This is Bill Ragsdale saying goodbye to all.